Chapter 3, Pre-Fight Dinners. Liz sat on the balcony outside her bedroom, looking up at her handiwork. She loved nothing more than to come out here in the quiet hours between when she raised the moon and filled the night with her beloved constellations. But she had to return to the throne room to rule over night court. It gave her an opportunity to reflect upon her life. All the way issues she was responsible for as Princess of Equestria, the great mysteries of the universe. Or, as on nights like tonight, how incredibly bored she was. It wasn't that she didn't have anything to do. There was a stack of reports and her subjects' petitions that was slowly taking her every square inch of her surface of her desk. She just couldn't bring herself to engage any of it. She had been back on the moon for several years, but she still felt like an outsider, looking in on her sister's perfect little kingdom. Celestia had been so perfectly understanding, and so had the other ponies she had dealt with every day. Or at least, they faked it well enough. It still didn't feel like they were equals. Her own public attendances attracted maybe a tenth as many ponies as those of her sister. And if anything, seemed to draw an even greater share of noble ponies, who clearly only cared about her as a means to improve their favor at Celestia's court. The real court in their eyes. And naturally, she played along not revealing her true feelings to any pony. She knew that any of them would immediately have to dissatisfaction. Hey, remember how you thought your sister felt before she turned evil and tried to kill you? Well, she might be feeling that way again now. No, that wouldn't do it at all. Better to pretend she was content with the situation and tried to resolve it privately with Celestia later on. Still a war on her, the double speak that ponies in her court transparently flattered with. The thoughtless whining of ponies who expected her to magically resolve their personal life was worth her time. Lily's ears perked up as she became aware of some pony coming towards her bedroom. Her room, like Celestia's, was thoroughly insulated from everything else in the palace by an entire wing of guest bedrooms that were apparently ever used. Now that Lily was complaining, since it allowed her a great deal of advanced warning whenever anywhere, she tried her focus towards the approaching pony. Her ears, Capable of listening in and on between the whispers of the stars, billions of miles of her equestria, were more than enough to the task of picking out the voice of the approaching pony, even the words he thought was mumbling only to himself. It was one of her bureaucrats, Pencil Pusser, who had spoken until the last few days. Based on the speech he was rehashing under her breath, he, as he approached, he wanted to speak to her about the current level of agricultural subsidies why the nobles from royal provinces felt they should be increased. She suddenly felt the irresistible urge to go for a midnight play of a canterlot. She chose to indulge it. Sending a quick telepathic message to the pair of guards by her bedroom door that she would be unavailable until future notice. She spread her wings and left it to the night sky. Soon, Princess of the Night was soaring over the city, invisible to her subjects below against the jet black sky. Luna couldn't help but admire the view. The simple pleasures of rulership were always the greatest. She never tired of soaring above the city that her sister had constructed for them in her absence. Even late into the night, there were ponies walking the streets. Restaurants were open and businesses thrived on the patronage of ponies who were out and about, enjoying her night. Her pleasure quickly turned toxic. Even you know, this had been handled more effectively under her sister's rule. Before her exile, Ponies barely gave her night a second thought. Now there were plays, movies, restaurants, art galleries, all sorts of entertainment open to ponies who wanted to do more than just sleep through the magnificent displays she devoted herself to providing for them every single night. None of which, she noted, with a touch of resentment, she had anything to do with. Thinking around a wide circle, she pointed herself so towards the palace. There was a great deal of work to be done. And only a little time before her court opened, and nobles began demanding answers on the proposals she hadn't yet bothered to read. Luna had almost reached her balcony again, when she was roused from her reflections by a loud cheer from somewhere below her. Glancing downward, she saw that one of the ponies in the palace grounds was still lit up and noisy with the sounds of combat, playing her responsibilities to her court against her desire for some diversion from that dreadful tedium. She quickly decided that the commotion below was well worth investigating. And the winner by TKO is Ironside. Let's hear it for our victory, everypony. Cheers went up through the gymnasium. While his opponent fought well, the winner of the match had been cleared by the end of the third round. 
The two combatants gave one another a respectful bro huff and stepped out of the ring to meet their supporters and discuss the results of their match with their respective team trainers. Or rather, that's what would have happened had the Princess of the Night not chosen to burst through the roof. Debris rained down from the ring as the Princess descended into the center of the ring. She glanced around at her soft subjects with a small smile. She had always known how to make a dramatic entrance. Greetings, ponies of the god! She began. Oblivious and the ponies closest to the stage were now clustering their ears with their hooves. We have taken time out from the royal schedule to descend and bless thee with our presence. We wish to feed our appreciation for thy low devotion to the throne of Equestria. Love and pause and look around at our audience. Celestia had been here addressing them. Surely, surely, what a burst of cheers right now. But these so called elite guard ponies, practically well as. Lillian began to wonder if, perhaps, this visit had been ill advised. So, like I was seeing, she continued, desperate to regain the initiative. Keep on, um, keep me on, I'll say, say, in the mind of Anakida. Lillian was now sure she had made a big mistake. Cursing her idiocy under her breast, she made a note to ask her sister how she approved in situations like these. I was around desperately for something, anything that would help her sense this ill advised visit. She suddenly spied her sister's protege, Twilight Sparkle, amongst the points in the present. What luck. Oh, Twilight Sparkle, it's good to be in thy presence once more. How, um, how are you all doing? She asked. This fine, Princess, Twilight answered. Would you mind um, not using the royal candlelight voice just for now? What? Oh, certainly, but. But of course. Oh, it would be no problem at all. A slight sigh of relief went up through the room. It's almost as if they didn't like the Royal Carolina voice. Luna chuckled to herself at the ridiculousness of the very idea. Princess Luna, thank you so much for coming to see us unexpectedly in the middle of this, your most glorious night, began Twilight again, having had enough experience with the princess to know when she needed to be thrown a lifeline. It honors the Royal Guard that you have visited them here, the gymnasium, Unless they spar with one another and train to hone their combat abilities, the better to protect the throne of Equestria. Yes! I mean, um, yes. The gymnasium wanted our elite guard ponies hone their abilities. That is, of course, the building that we knew we were visiting when we came into the roof. It is exactly the building which we were entirely meaning to visit, and certainly not one that we chose at random. We would have felt a little more at ease. Certainly no point was we able to see through such a clever lie. She was suddenly struck with a bolt of inspiration. Perfect plan to salvage the situation. So, now that we are here, we feel the need to test the middle of our guards. You lie! You people might be wondering what was up with that. Please, please take your history books. You people who are probably just now 19 and are hearing that joke for the first time. Terrorist Trixie! Back in the early. Early tens? That was hilarious! Nothing but in figure is like a lot of hoofticuffs. What party here feels able to challenge the princess in single combat? The more Luna considered the prospect, the more sure she showed that this was the right call. Why not challenge the guards to come up with a champion to face her one on one? Perhaps it could even be gone to distance. As though Celestia has said enough of the damn things, accursed yearly obligations she had been dragged for to, forced to sit through year after year, it was about time to establish a few of them on her own. Secondly, no pony seemed eager to volunteer. When it became with a guard at this modern age, Luna remember a time when it was common for a pony to go up against some sort of mythic beast or even the slightest chance of earning the title of Royal Guard Pony. Obviously, the last millennium had made them all too soft. Still, Luna wasn't about to give up her new tradition so easily. She had picked one of the ponies in the room and challenged him directly. Of course, there was only one pony in the room she actually knew. Toilet Sparkle! We challenge you to a month of smash of spawning. You will face us a glorious combat! Luna promised herself she wouldn't crush her too badly. She was sure she would get her sister to forgive her later on for any certain permanent damage the match might cause. She also resolved not to do anything the young unicorn couldn't recover from for within a year or two. After all, she wasn't a monster. Not anymore, anyway. Well, hey, if you want to see Twilight really letting it all out on against you, Luna, I know of a fic. Though the gym had been packed to incapacitate a moment ago, Twilight suddenly found herself several feet away from any other pony in the room. Refusing a direct challenge from her princess was out of the question. 
seeing no other choice, the unfortunate unicorn trotted up to the ring. Princess was in it. Yes, Princess, as she turned to address fair fight, the Genesian's referee. Tell us, what are the limits of combat in this arena? May we assume that the Marquis of Queensberry rules are still in order to the aid? Well, Princess, this is a military facility with a goal of preparing soldiers for the most brutal combat conditions. We don't really normally have any formal rules. Perhaps anything goes, but anyways. Match ends when either our competitors are unable to continue fighting, or the referee decides the danger to participants is too great. Well, we can't adapt. We are not even not adaptable. So I prepare yourself for no holds barred magical combat. Prepare the princess. When I watched Twilight step up to the ring, before she could cross it, two dull orange holes yanked her away and just dragged her to the corner of the gymnasium, where poster the legendary boxing champion. Rocky Mercino was hanging with a speed bag. The two seemed to be in the middle of an enemy and disgusted. This wouldn't do. She needed another direct strikes in, or faced with another awkward silence. As she said, so something got fire. Even her mind occupied, she picked out the most flammable object in the room. Luna couldn't help but overhearing a few sips of whispered discussions happening on the other side of the room. Completely irresponsible, a freaking goddess. I'm classes you by simple words of magnitude. Dumbest idea I ever heard. Ha <laughs> ha! This must be one of those pep talks Luna had read so much about. The Aristellians must be Twilight's coach or instructor. She made enough to know to compliment him for training Twilight she had received under Luna ruthlessly crushed her. So like the unicorn stallion Twilight had been speaking to you, called up in her room. Princess, while I'm sure any of us would be honored to face you, our code is quite clear. Joining a harm to a princess or another pony under our protection would be an unthinkable breach of duty. So while I know Twilight would love to accept your challenge, Rails began to suddenly push Twilight towards the door. Fear not, Luna called out from inside the ring. I hereby decree that any violence or crime committed against me by Twilight Sparkle in the course of this challenge is preemptively forgiven and pardoned. Is there any objection you wish to raise? No, Princess, not that I can think of, said Reynolds. What if it? Then let us begin without further delay. Come now, Twilight. We must eager to throw it down with you. So this he was out of options. Twilight gradually approached the arena and stepped inside. She took the training amulet that was offered to her by Fair Fight and placed it on her. Offered another and a dead amulet to Luna, but she waited off. What a ridiculous notion! The idea that a mortal unicorn would be able to seriously hurt her. It was laughable. I'm glad for thy sake that that would be protected. But we do not intend to hurt Bonk, nor do we expect you to do so. Princess, I was just thinking. You know what's a way more exciting than magical combat? Yes! In fact, I think I have my emergency test set myself. I can be someone. Ding ding. Twice last sense of attempt to cut off as the bell rang to signify the match officially started. Luna smiled, lowered herself to a wider fine stance. Come now, my little pony. And let's begin. Chapter 4 Title Match. Twice mind breaks to keep up with the events unfolding around her. A few minutes ago, she had been trying to decide what flavor of post-workout shake to drink. Now she was in the middle of the ring with hundreds of ponies watching her. All of them surely to be expecting to see her demolish by the princess. It was completely unfair. She was so dumbfounded that the match was nearly over before it began. The president and princess hadn't hesitated at all. She's only combat instincts in the last year trained to insult her with allowed her to leap away. While Luna's deadly energy beast cut through the space he occupied a moment ago. Twilight Sparkle, we will appreciate your full attention for this matter if you do not mind. So Luna conservatively, now a god! Twilight didn't bother and needed another reminder. Reached into her mind and manifested a trio of familiar wards, her go to defense for the beginning of a match. She spent months agonizing the most effective possible combinations and eventually settled on one that would offer her the greatest possible protection. Because the wide array of potential attacks. Ah, uh, yes, defenses, forgive us. We have forgotten to put up our own before beginning, said Luna. Three wars appeared around her, none of which Twilight recognized. Twilight cursed under her breath. First, she had been nearly caught off guard by Luna's initial attack. Did she fail to notice that her opponent had been unprotected? She had to get her head in the game. Yeah, the situation was unfair, but moaning about it wasn't going to change a thing. Captain Holly said, at the end of the day, the tip of your opponent's spear won't care if he beat you fairly or unfairly. Only that he beat you. Twilight resolved not to let any more opportunities slip by her. 
Maybe she wasn't going to win this, but she can at least go down fighting. A fourth lord appeared around the Lunar Princess. Well, Twilight thought to herself, I suppose that isn't all that surprising. Sharon Legends and the most elite arm ages, using a razor to four wards and magical duels. So I'm kind of surprised that the princess would. A fifth ward appeared. Let's see. No, she's an alicorn. Can't expect her to be eliminated to in a six. Oh, come on. What's better? exclaimed Luna. No, I think we can begin in earnest coming out. Tyler's reply was to fire a bolt of lightning in her direction. It struck one of Luna's wards and ricocheted off the magical grounding field inscribed around the ring. But in mid-flight, it suddenly changed course and redirected itself towards Luna once more. This time from her side. Luna flung another war in position, just in time to reduce the blast to a harmless shower of sparks. Chain lightning! We love Luna! Her horn glowing again. Twice skin prickled as the air around her began to ionize. She dove away a moment before the lightning struck, shedding her own momentum with a combat roll, and left her standing on the other side of the arena. Anticipating the princess's next move, she directed all of her wards into position and caught their attentive bolt. Even though three levels of protection, it felt like being struck by a spinning carrot and forced a blow pushed her back. This head to head slugfest would not go well for her. So now he decided the best bet was to stay agile. The ring was large enough that she had plenty of room to maneuver. And she made the most of it. She zigzagged her way to the edge as Luna's attacks went wide. Luna gave chase. Her longer legs would have been an unbeatable speed advance in a straight up race, but were a hindrance as she tried to change directions to match Twilight's movements. Twilight had sealed to pursue every size, shape, and energy she could think of. Bursts of frost, cones of flame, and arcs of darkness infused energy flew between the combatants, only to be dodged and deflected every time. Luna slowed as she deferred a portion of her attention to shifting her wards from one another to better defend against the onslaught. It was clear that despite her combat experience, Luna was rusty enough that running and maintaining her defenses, firing accurately at a moving target, simultaneously was beyond her. Twilight spun effortlessly around, over and over, deadly obstacles Luna created in her path, and even the ones that did require deflecting didn't nearly have as much force behind them as the lightning had. Spells flew widely in every direction, but none found their target. Still, she was only delaying the inevitable. Twilight racked her brain, trying to think of some way to Luna's defenses, cutting a couple of anything that seemed likely to work. Once it was clear that Twilight wasn't to go immediately be curb stomped, the crowd went nuts. Each time she dodged the princess's attacks or deflected them harmlessly to the floor, there was a fresh surge of cheers. She even threw an unnecessary backflip as she led the way from a poorly aimed concessive blast. She felt unstoppable as she expertly rose through the thicket of deadly energies. Time seemed to slow to a crawl, and every time she predicted a spread pattern of a magically generated crystalline missile barrage, which stepped away from the spot, she knew an attack would land before Luna even fired, and she felt a fast surge of comfort and joy. After ten minutes, Luna was gasping for air. She stopped chasing Twilight back the way to catch her breath, keeping a wary eye on her opponent as her chest heaved. Why do you refuse to stay still? She was able to gasp up between breaths. What's the matter, Luna? A few too many moon pies since you got back. We may need to amend the royal schedule. Try not for more talking, Luna admitted grudgingly. Twilight noted that she seemed to be recovering quickly. Still, the thought cannot avoid us to get forever. We are allowed thee to concede now and forfeit our chance of honor, if you wish, in recognition of this display of our skin. An easy let us out. Twilight considered the offer. While she was doing well now, she had no idea of how or even if she could lend a hit on Luna. Corner her eyes, she saw Captain Rells at the back of the crowd, waving his front hose in the air, exaggerating nodding. If he wrestled part of her mind, told her that forfeiting would be the smart call. Sorry, Princess, we're gonna have to decline. Luna sighed. He suspected as much, she said. They crossed back into her combat stance again. The fight was soon in earnest once more. Twilight tried to refer to her previous status he had dodging and harassing her opponent. But this time, Luna had realized seizing her was a folly. Rather than try to pursue, she found herself in the center of the ring and stood her ground. Her defenses were still as imperishable as ever, but now her attacks were more focused. Luna was relentless now that she could aim effectively. 
beams of energy slammed against Twilight's wards, and even with the training amulet absorbing some of their impact, each one was like being struck by a sledgehammer. A fireball struck the ground beside her and exploded. The heat singed her coat, and softly threw her off balance, knocking her to the edge of the arena. As she tumbled, she lost track of the princess for a moment, only avoided a flurry of smaller flame strikes by sheer chance. Twilight threw out a few desperate strikes of her own, but Luna's wards blocked each one without breaking her concentration. Twilight found herself forced to merely react to whatever the princess threw at her, rather than playing her dances in several steps in advance. The ringing in her ears had drowned out the gasping crowd. Her earlier feeling of resistance was shattered, and all she could do was cast the slightest gifts of blows, flying in from every direction and fling herself in random directions. Suddenly, she spotted a gap between the two columns of flames Luna had called down to try and fence her in. Twilight leaped down between them without hesitation. For an instant, it felt like the heat would broil her alive. But a moment later, Twilight found herself in the clear of a clear shot of Luna. Summoning in all her strength, Twilight lowered her horn and poured forth a blast of pure consensus force straight at her opponent. It straight towards one of Luna's wars, and all of Twilight's hopes went with it. She had just break through one or two of them. Twilight's attack struck the wards there, and the classic heresies warped and twisted as they tried to annihilate each other. Twilight's heart surged. Her blast wasn't being deflected or dispelled. She did have a chance. She could. The energy of her blast suddenly surged up and outward, breaking into pieces and flying in several directions away from the princess and straight through the grounding field that should have prevented from crossing the boundary of the ring. The fragments of her spell streaked out over the audience for a moment, until each one burst simultaneously into vivid, color sparks and streaks. A deadly blow had been turned into an impromptu fireworks display. The crowd oohed and awed appreciatively. What kind of wards were those, anyway? Chasing a spell's energy type, directing a purpose, all on the fly like that? None of it was possible. Her back lights gave out, and Twilight slumped down. She looked over at Luna, who was wearing a contented smile. Twilight recognized it as the same smile Celestia wore when she pulled off her prank she found especially amusing. Twilight realized she was gaping and shut her mouth. How long was he just playing with me for? She thought she was doing well. He did very well, for Walter. We found this little exercise to be truly bracing. Suddenly, when the shocking twilight out of her trance, she seemed to read through the unicorn's thoughts. Twilight wanted to crawl into the hole and never come out. She deserved to be buried and toyed with this this way. Luna could have just blown her away from the get-go, and she was just so much more powerful. Twice human and Lacey was completely, quickly consumed by the anger welling within her. You think this is over? I haven't heard a whistle yet! She stood up and turned to face the princess. I'm still smiling as she watched the sparks of her firework display fading to nothingness. When I looked over her, a smile fell away. Twilight? What art thou doing? She asked. Twilight didn't reply. She just glared as her horn began to glow. Twilight? Seek this resistance display at once. Twice heart continued to gather power. The concentration of magical energy warped the space surrounding it, and the shape of the magical charge seemed to dance around as it distorted the light around it. Those wards swung around so all six of them were directly in front of her. So yourself and Twilight. Six in that had already withstood everything Twilight had thrown out. Twilight, please, we do not wish to have to hurt you. No answer. Luna braced herself for what was coming. Twilight screamed and raised, and teleported to the other side of the ring behind the princess. For a second time that night, Twilight felt like her world was moving in slow motion. The teleport sapped away most of the energy she had gathered, but she traded for something much more valuable. For the first time that night, none of Luna's defenses stood between the two of them. As soon as the princess realized what had happened, she would rearrange her wards again, and this opportunity would be gone. There wasn't any time for fancy spellcrafting or trick shots. Twilight poured as much raw power as she could into a single shot and loosed it against the princess. She watched it streak away from her, and Luna turned her head and eyes go wide the moment before the blast struck her as well as flank. The explosion was deafening. The force of the blast sent Luna tumbling out of the ring and into the audience, where she landed hard in the middle of the crowd. For the first time that night, the crowd had gone completely silent. He seemed unsure whether to cheer or arrest her for Reggie's side. A moment later, Luna stirred and rose to her feet, spreading her wings. She flew back to the center of the ring, 
although Twilight knows that when she landed, she shifted her weight off the leg and Twilight's blaster struck. A large bruise had already began to form, nearly visible to the crowd under her dark cloak. Seeing her matted, sweaty mane was a far cry from its typical glory. There was a small trickle of blood slowly running down from her side, an unseen cut. We will admit that you forgot you could do that, said Luna Vistigly. Nonetheless, though your trick was clever, we believe that this mass is over. You will forfeit now, or we will be forced to make an exit. Twilight narrowed her eyes and glared at the princess. No, she said simply, I'm not finished yet. While Luna could respond, Twilight here teleported to the other part of the ring. Don't you remember how I learned to do this in the first place? Twilight asked. I copied it off you. Last time my friends kicked you, plod up and down the every force. Luna frowned. The enemies of harmony. Oh, they were very helpful, Twilight said. But as I was recalled, my friends and I evaded every one of your little tricks and illusions before we even found them. Well, you get right down to it. Isn't that a little sad? Six appointments are training against a self-proclaimed goddess riding high after her big return to Equestria. You really thought you were going to conquer the world? For all your supposed power, you went down awfully easy. Twilight continued, <laughs> It might be funny if it weren't so pathetic. Most attempts to focus on Twilight and lots of fresh wave attacks were stymied as he teleported from one point to another. Refusing to stay still long enough for the princess to also concentrate on assault. It was all the reason could do to keep an eye on her. Spinning around as Twilight disappeared and reappeared at random points around the ring. Cease this useless prattle! Luna shied. Her magic glass out the spot Twilight had occupied a moment ago. But not quickly enough to catch her before she disappeared again. I have survived more than a millennium for every year you've existed. Do not presume to lecture me on the nature of power, Twilight Sparkle. If Celestia went evil, do you think any of us would be able to stop her? To continue Twilight, she would have crossed this with a single thought. But you couldn't. I always figured it was because a part of you didn't want to kill us and was holding back. But that wasn't it, was it? You just couldn't beat us. Let's say you still can't when it comes down to it. No wonder every pony thinks of you as the lesser sister. I said shut up, Luna shouted. Twilight ignored the princess's demands. Know what would have happened if you never came back to Equestria? Or the elements killed you instead of the spelling nightmare move from your body? Nothing. Celestia could do your job. She had the sun and moon by herself for a thousand years. You are completely forgotten. Really even on foot knowing the history books. Honestly, I suspect this he only keeps you around out of pity. None of your subjects actually like you, or your press is not either. They're all just too scared to tell you that to your face, Twilight so continued. Teleporting from place to place before Luna could attack her again. As Luna sees a barely continued rage, Twilight is mocking her inability to strike her. One of her wards and wild itself, and disappeared without the princess attempting to maintain it. I guess the shark tongue really does cut deeper than a sharp horn. A rare idea of how to after this is over, thought Twilight. Twilight Sparkle, that teleportation ability you're so fond of was invented by a student of mine. More than 5,000 years ago, Luna said joyously. Do you know he also invented a countermeasure? She muttered an incantation in her breath, stand to hook down on the floor of the arena. Twilight braced herself, expecting a surge of energy or while something to happen. But nothing seemed to have changed. As she looked around confused, Luna turned to face her once again. Play tight as ever. You will pay duty for the words and actions you will lose tonight, I assure you. Twilight made the teleport once more, aiming to end up on the other side of the ring. She disappeared, only reappeared a few inches from where she had began. So the comfortable, familiar feeling of successfully landing her teleportation ability. She felt like her entire body had been wrung out and thrown through a wall. As he stumbled, trying to reorientate herself, she reached out where it says it's trying to determine what had gone wrong. So I fell around the spot where she disappeared. There was an unfamiliar aura around it, it hadn't been there before. Like some sort of test high, ethereal rope, wires strung around the arena. So I caught a glimpse of Luna moving to position to throw another attack. She was limping, clearly trying not to appear, put her way on the leg Twilight struck earlier. 
Lynn's magical air seems streaked towards Twilight, nearly causing her off guard. When she looks forward to Dawson, passing through a line of force like it was the only of the air. I guess it only blocks things that are teleporting, she thought. Now she knew what to look for. She reached around again for her senses. Soon out, there were dozens of lines crisscrossing the ring in all directions. Twilight had no desire to experience being reached back into the real world, Mel teleported again. She prepared herself to double away from Lynn's next attack and returned to Weaving and Dossie until another opportunity presented itself. A set of Luna's shout burst off on the floor and wrapped itself around Twilight's neck. Twilight was completely unprepared for the attack, too stunned to reattack before the prehensile shadow yanked her downward, slamming her face into the arena floor. Dazed from the blow, she was helpless as the shout dragged her towards where Luna waited, but her up until she was face to face with the princess. The princess's eyes glowed with a harsh, angry power. The crowd let out a collective gasp. Please, Twilight, tell us again how weak and pathetic we are. She said in a deathly calm tone that was so much worse than the world hit her voice had been. Do go on some more about how inferior we are to the perfect and wonderful Celestia. Perhaps you like to make a speech about the wonderful power of friendship. You always seem to be fond of those. Five tentacle tightened its grip, and the only sound that escaped Twilight's lips was a raspy, choked off gas. No, but you are so very talented before. What a pity. Now, how about we do a little experiment together? Usually, by choking up ponies will turn purple. I'm so you already know that. Twilight of Celestia tells us you play much enjoy to save the arts of the colony. But you are already purple. Do I kind of you a turn? Any hypothesis? A tentacle squeezed Twilight's throat closed entirely. Panic seized her. An abstract, detached portion of her mind reminded her she just ran from last week. The primary the brain of autism would lead to unconsciousness in 8.3 on average. Sure enough, she felt darkness creeping around the edges of her vision. She had to get free, but how? To doubt any attack she'd be able to use now would be able to break Luna's control over how the shadows would drive it back. She could feel the teleporting plate through blocking things Luna set up behind her, in front of her, and off to both sides. Of course, there were other directions. A quick check occurred. If there were any barriers above the ring, well, they got to lose. Luna's child suddenly found herself crossing empty air where Twilight had been a moment ago. Ray appeared directly over Luna and was falling towards her back. Twilight didn't know it, but Luna's defensive wars had been hoofed by the Dyarch during the pre classical era 1700 years ago, where magical duels were common and a highly ritualized affair. Luna had taken it up as a hobby. When the very first rules the unicorn nobles had all agreed on when crafting their dueling code was that physical contact between combatants was strictly forbidden, since wards could only protect against a number of specific attack types at once. It wouldn't make sense to waste any depressive space in the spell matrix, protecting against something a duelist would never have to face, right? The upshot of all this was that none of Luna's five remaining wards and anything that would carry a unicorn falling from the sky. Twilight passed right through them and landed on the princess's back. Wrapping her hose around Luna's neck and again balance herself, when I still cried for the aftermath of being choked, she knew she had no hope of summoning enough energy for a proper attack. She charged her horn with as much energy as she could quickly gather, and without bothering to shape it into any sort of spell, since the horn tips the most sensitive place she can reach, the base of Luna's horn. Luna scrawled in an agony as raw magical air she ripped through her unprotected mind. She instantly bucked forward, whooping Twilight off her back. So I fell, the tip of her horn cut Luna's forehead, gouging down to the bone. Blood streamed to the princess's eye. Twilight stunned on the floor, visits sleeping as she tried to catch up with the events happening around her. That must say, as he challenged her friendly into her brain, was sent most unicorns into a coma. How was the princess still standing? She was still even keeping three wards up. Still, at the very least, he must have completely overwhelmed the other ponies his magical senses. She so exploit that. Only if you get up before she recovers enough to walk over here and snap you in half. Move! Twilight rolled over and staggered to her feet. A sharp glance of pain greeted her effort and put her weight on her fry hoof. Twilight tested digitally. The muscle landed on poorly, it was likely spring. Luna was across her wing over a host of her head, trying to stick out the effects of Twilight's attack. Before she could look up, Twilight put an invisibility spell over herself. Usually, invisibility wasn't nearly as useful in a fight as one might think. Any opponent worth hiding from could sense the masculine concealment field and track it down easily. It was a lot more useful against the pony who had been blinded to magical heresies. 
Luna recovered enough to look around, but puzzled to find herself apparently alone in the rain. Her eyes passed over the spot where Twilight stood. Her unicorn felt a wave of relief when they moved on without any glimmer of recognition. She walked silently as Luna wrapped her horn in shadow, but it took the shape of a three-foot blade protruding from her forehead. It looked sharp. Twilight considered her options. Any projectile directional based attack would give her persistence to Luna. So he spell or not. And once Luna knew where she was, that shadow would be wrapped around her neck again in no time. Or something even worse. Twilight seriously doubted that anything she could do right now stood a chance of piercing Luna's remaining wards. So he needed some kind of distraction. Twilight smiled. Her mind flashed back to last summer, when Pinky dragged her to put on a puppet show for pound of pumpkin cake. Twilight used the opportunity to research a new spell for the occasion. Specifically, a fertility was a spell. Twilight took a moment to recall the workings of the spell, focused onto a point of the incident ring behind Luna. Boo! In a flash, the alcorn spun around and brought to the edge of the shallow blade on the spot Twilight's voice had sprung from, cut deeply into the stone floor, tearing it apart like a paper stringer. Doing so, as he broke up in a circle, was the runes pound a magical gravity field to the arena where it was scrapped. Every pony in the room felt the protective energies waver and vanished entirely. Hoys in the audience muttered to one another, as began to realize there was no longer anything preventing them from becoming collateral damage. A few began to scoot towards the nearest exit. Come and face us, coward! shouted Luna. You cannot hide forever. We will tear this building apart to fight you if we must. I'm the coward now? Twilight's voice from another part of the ring. Where were you when we fought Discord? When the Chainsleys tried to invade Camelot during my brother's wedding? Ain't to break it to you, princess, but you're the coward here, not me. Luna snarled and flung another blast at the direction the voice had come from. Without the grounding field to catch it, the force of the blast continued until it struck the wall, sending Macer and raining down the unprotected points below, shattering a nearby window. The light snapped back to reality all realizing simultaneously how much danger they were in. A stampede towards the exit began. Twice voice popped up in another part of the ring. It all makes me wonder, have you ever actually won a fight? I mean, a fight on some point on your pet level of raw power. Or do you just prefer to be up on weaker ponies to compensate for your total lack of actual skill? When I spun around, I went forth a wide cone of fire, scorching the spot where the noise had come from and everything else on that side of the arena for good measure. For her attempt to defer it, it's the rights of Twilight chosen. Luna didn't notice the purple glow of Twilight's telekinesis wrapped itself around a folding chair, recently abandoned by a fleeing spectator. When Tugsy pulled her ring and swung it downward, really slamming on the direction distracted princess. Luna crumpled to the ground under the force of the blow. Twilight brought the chair around for another blow, but from the ground, Luna was able to maneuver a ward to block it. The chair chattered as it struck the magical field. Sheeta! She gasped out as she slowly rose up once again more. She gave a hacking cough and spat on the floor, staining the white canvas with blood and phlegm. Left eye was clenched shut to keep any more of the blood from her gas irritating it. Breath came staggered breaths. No pony told us we could use a weapon. Lynn's face was screwed up a concentration. As he teleported something to her side, Ply didn't recognize it. It looked like a fessy net with heavy black weights tied around the perimeter. Trixie doesn't know about the audience out there listening to this, but she is on Luna's side. Go master. Trix. That's why I didn't recognize it. It looked like a fessy net. Luna looked upwards, fired beams of energy at the exposed ceiling. The blast tore through the support beams. The pieces of debris began running down around them. We told you we would tear this building apart to find you, did we not? shouted Luna, voice carrying over into sounds of rocks crashing to the floor. Twilight began to panic, so he had to drop the illusion of visibility to have any hopes of deflecting the falling stones. Looking up, she spotted a heavy looking chunk of marble at the side, buzzing straight towards her. She just reacted while thinking, pushing out from where she was standing to jump to a safer place. She landed with most of her weight on her injured leg and collapsed, shouting out in pain. In a moment, Luna had thrown the net on top of her. Twilight had a nose before but was barbed. The tiny hooks cut into her as she pushed the net into her herself. Every thrashy gesture became more hopelessly entangled. Twilight became aware of something else. The net was growing hot, burning wherever the fibers touched her flesh. She felt so weak as all of a sudden. 
wariness lies the only felt of times he foolishly pulled back to back all night as to prepare for a test. It's called a grounding net, Luna said response to Twilight's unasked question. We use them to restrain enemy unicorn mages on the battlefield in days gone by. Those five are magically super conductive, pulling any magic around them into weights, and from there back into the earth, including the magic in your body. Luna kicked the helpless unicorn over front host, sending Twilight rolling away. Under her side, the name's grips tightened again. She tried to cry out of pain, but didn't have the energy for that anymore. We find it interesting. Neither you nor we can cast magic at another through the netting. In your case, that handicap reduces you to a sniveling whip who not even beg for her life. But for us, we remain a goddess. Luna turned and bucked Twilight and back hose, sending her flying out of her ring until she crashed into a pile of rubble. Luna watched the rubble for several seconds and did not stir. Luna wiped the sticky dry cover from her eyes. She stepped down her ring and looked slowly to her rebel to fix this for good. <laughs> Liz's ears perked up at the sound of the whistle. Since their audience had evacuated a few minutes ago, she assumed she was alone with Twilight. She turned to see a dull orange unicorn stallion holding the referee's whistle to his lips. You. We remember you speaking to Twilight Sparkle before the match. What is your name? asked Luna. I'm Captain Reynolds of the Royal Guard, your eyes. Reynolds bowed deeply to the princess. Congratulations on your victory. I apologize that the match was to stop sooner. They're fighting and I are going to have a very frank discussion about his future as a referee for this gym. I promise you that. Reynolds walked past Luna and worked at the debris covering Twilight. Horns shone a gentle yellow as he tossed the top layer of debris aside and uncovered the past that unicorn beneath. Still breathing, looks like the net tore open or fell off from her in the landing. Step aside and leave her to us, Captain, demanded Luna. No. Reynolds turned to face her, placing himself directly between the two mares. Luna's eyes narrowed. Captain, that was not a request. We are ordering you as our sovereign ruler to stand down. My apologies, Princess Luna. The charge of the Royal Guard is quite clear. Life or death circumstances we are permitted, indeed, required to disregard any order that might put our charges in jeopardy. And make no mistake, this mayor is under my under my protection. Luna's mouth hung open at the guard's audacity. She was in no mood to be patient. Screech, you let her horn shell, all that pain and fury to a deadly burst of magic. Riles was ready. The three wars he had at the top of his mind sprang up and confirmed to the point where Luna's blow would fall. He had dirty to assault as Luna's magic continued to pour forth, driven by frustrations in the night. Finally, Luna broke off her assault. Captain, we are Princess Luna of the night, me of the stars and moon, ruler of this land. In times of war and strife, we have torn the very souls from our enemy's body and left them as nothing but lifeless helps. We have thrown those who opposed us into the furnaces of distant stars that burn alive for eternity. We have entered the minds of our foes and inflicted upon them the experience for suffering for decades, but only moments past the reality. Now we are going to give you one final chance. Do not throw it away so slightly. Move aside now! Rail strangled under the fourth of Luna's wrath. Blocking her attack had been harder than he expected to be. Twilight made it easier in the ring. Drew himself back up. Again, I apologize if I was unclear the last time you asked, Princess Luna. I told you, you can't have her. Roaring with anger, anger, Luna resumed her bombardment. Despite the captain's best effort, he was being overwhelmed. Fences were slowly withering her away under the raw force of the assault. For more of his own air as he forth to try to short the pain spreading along the length of his horn. He began to crack under the strain. There was a sharp pain spreading along the length of his horn. Part of was under the strain. Just when he thought he could not hold off any longer, when it stopped again. We don't understand you, Captain. Surely you realize you'll not be able to hold us off forever. I will destroy you if you continue to resist. And I will do whatever I like with Twilight, and your sacrifice will have been for naught. Luna watched the unicorn drop a sausage head. He seemed to be sobbing. Obviously, he knew she was right he would give up. A moment later, she recognized that he wasn't sobbing in pain. He was laughing. Oh, princess. Who said anything about holding you off forever? What in the Tartarus is going on here? Well, it's also upright and the familiar voice behind her. Celestia! Um, we get silly and explain. 
Celestia descended from the same hole in the ceiling Luna made when she entered the gym. Instead of her crown of regalia, she was clad in a white bathroom with a pink nightcap. Yes, please do explain, sister, why I was just woken up by serpents who are insisting the palace is under attack. We suppose that our master Twilight Sparkle may have become a touch more spirited than we might do. Luna looked into the surprise Twilight's prone, a moving form in the rubble. Her eyes suddenly went wide. Luna, what did you do? I swear to mother and father, if you hurt her. She's okay. She's not unconscious right now. But we'll be fine once we get her bastards up. Where else were interrupted? I just checked on her. Celestia closed her eyes for a moment, willing her to regain her composure. As she opened up again, she wore the same practice regal expression she usually did. Luna, go back to the palace and clean yourself up. We'll discuss it later tomorrow. I promise you. Luna didn't need to be told twice. She so left away and spread her wings, flying out through the ceiling once more. I do have a door, you know, said Rails, more to himself than any playing around him. Captain, once again, you have my thanks for your efforts to protect my student. Your dad case is commendable. Will you feel up to it? I would like a report for you on the night's events as well, said Celestia. You're welcome, Princess, said Rails. Slight so suddenly trembled, Celestia noticed that he had naturally moved from that spot. He was standing since he entered. Actually, one more thing. Yes, Captain? Requesting permission to lose Constantus, Your Highness. She smiled. At ease, soldier. Rails was out cold before he could even hit the ground.